So my name's Amy, and I have the pleasure of introducing all the glassware that you'll be experts in using by the end of this year. Uh, first, I'd like to introduce your best friend, your volumetric flask, which you use to make all your standards and all your dilutions and all your unknowns. They range from about 50 milliliters to 100 milliliters. You can actually get them in two liters and five liters, but you won't be making samples that large. Um, we also have some graduated cylinders, which you won't be using too often because the error in using these um, graduated cylinders are quite high. Then you also have a range of beakers, which are great for sampling if you want to transfer volumes into your volumetric flasks. And most importantly, you have a lot of transfer pipettes and measuring volumes. So the best pipette you can use for making dilutions or standard samples is your transfer pipette because it has one mark and it's very accurate. If you need to measure smaller volumes or more awkward volumes like two mils or five mils or even four and a half mils, uh, you also have measuring pipettes. Uh, there's two that are graduated and they look very similar but there's a very significant difference between the two. Uh, you'll notice that they're both five mils except this measuring pipette goes from zero to the tip which is your five mils, where in this, what they call a more pipette, goes from zero to five, not taking into account this extra volume in the tip. So this, as a more pipette, you kind of need a special bulb for this, but you won't be using this in this lab, but it's good to know what glassware is out there. There's also some Erlenmeyer flasks, which are really great for boiling solutions so you don't you lose much of your solvent, and also very good for controlled titrations. And mentioning titrations, uh, you'll be using a burette, which is very graduated and very accurate in helping um, introduce control volumes at a controlled rate. So now that you're familiar with all the type of glassware that you'll be using in this lab, um, I'm going to show you how to do a quick, easy dilution, which you'll be using to make all your standard solutions and all your unknowns. Your main equation that you will use throughout the entire lab is C1V1 equals C2V2, where your C1 is your initial concentration, your C2 is the final concentration that you want to make, and V2 is the final volume of your final concentration you want to make, so how much. So, in this calculation, we're mainly trying to figure out V1. How much of the volume of your most concentrated stock solution you need to use to make your final concentration? So, doing an easy example by diluting 100 micrograms per milliliter, which is also parts per million. So to dilute 100 ppm to 2 ppm, how do we do that? We take 100 ppm sodium stock solution and we want to make 2 ppm in 100 milliliters. Conveniently, this equation works out very easy that you can figure out that your initial volume, which is your V1, is two milliliters. So now that you have your gloves, make sure you have your safety goggles on. And so we're going to make a very simple dilution. Make sure you grab a beaker because you're never going to pipe out of the stock solution ever because if you do, you're um, contaminating the stock solution and that affects everybody else who uses that solution. So let's be fair and just use a simple beaker that you've cleaned. Um, as I mentioned before, the best type of measuring any volume is your transfer pipettes. So they actually come in some unique volumes. This one is a two mil that we conveniently need. This is a very awesome pipette bulb, which has three points, which is why it's called automated pipette or automated pipette bulb. A is for reducing the air pressure in the bulb. So much like these, I'm sure you've experienced, it's hard to keep the air pressure reduced on your own. So this little seal helps you achieve that. And then there's two points here, S to connect suction from your pipette to the air bulb, and then E for empty. So this makes life much easier when making your standards. So make sure your tip is submerged in solution. You press S. Oop. And as you can see, the volume or the solution is going up the pipette very controlled. You want to make sure that the tip of the meniscus, sometimes if you go too far, that's okay. You can push E for empty to control the volume to go back down. 
ensuring that the meniscus sits, the bottom of the meniscus sits at the top of the line. Once you're happy with the volume that you've measured, you can simply empty it into your clean volumetric flask at any pace that you want. And there's always going to be a little bit volume left over in the tip. That's okay because this two mils accounts for that not going out. So make sure you don't blow this out or your volumes will be a little bit off, especially in terms of your standard solutions. So now that the hardest part of your standard solution preparation is finished, you just get to dilute it. So we have some just in distilled deionized water. We're going to fill it up as much as possible until it reaches about the bottom of this neck. So the beauty of these volumetric flasks is that they're very accurate just because of the narrowness of this neck. Make sure you don't spill too much. This is a good time to make friends with your lab partner because this takes time. Just because the end of this is about one mils to two mils and you can fill it up very quickly. And if you use this to accurately ensure that the bottom of the meniscus sits at the top of the line, you've successfully diluted your 100 ppm stock to two ppm. The last part of this is to invert it at least 10 to 20 times to ensure complete mixing and then you've successfully prepared a 2 ppm standard solution for your experiments. So that's how simple and easy dilutions can be. Um, you'll be doing a lot of standard dilutions and um, dilutions of your unknowns through the end of the semester. So by the end of this course and this year, you'll be experts at preparing standards.